Good morning, y'all. Believe it or not, we are in day 21 of California stay at home orders. Yeah. Oh, we need Jesus. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, good morning, Lord. Lord, we look to you. I don't know where different people are coming from, but wherever we are coming from, Father God, we want to uh, bring ourselves to your to your feet, knowing that you are our only living water. And we need you. Uh, awaken our hearts to you. Help us not to numb out, check out, or burn out, Lord. Help us to stay engaged with you. Help us to hold on to you, Lord. And whatever circumstance we're in, help us to be able to give thanks, Lord God. Let nothing rob us of our joy and to stay in prayer. We pray your cleansing right now. Any offensive way within us, forgive us, Lord. And may your son Jesus, uh, his blood, uh, cover us of all our sin and his sacrifice as we remember this Passion Week. And Father, um, yeah, lead us by your Spirit into your ways. Help us to be in step with your Spirit today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We are now in John chapter 5. I'm reading from John chapter 5. So you can take out your Bibles, paper Bible, or you can open up a uh, Bible app. Um, and uh, yeah, let's take a look, see what God wants to speak to us this morning. Uh, and we want to think, what does this passage tell us about God? John chapter 5. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So what does this passage tell us about God? Let's take a minute to reflect on that.
does this passage tell us about God? I mean, there could be a lot here, but you know, look at verse 6, just focus on one thing. When Jesus saw him lying there, that invalid, and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? You see in here, Jesus is compassion. He doesn't just walk by, but he sees him and he learns about his condition. I, I'm not sure if, if Jesus talked to him in you or talked around in you or he asked the father and the father revealed that to him. But this, what Jesus says to this invalid is really interesting if we think on it. Do you want to get well? Like Jesus knows all things, right? Uh, he, he could just ask the father and the father could reveal those thoughts. Uh, he, he's known the thoughts of Pharisees in their hearts. But to ask this invalid, do you want to get well? He really, it shows me that God really cares about what, what is it that we want, you know? Um, and for us to articulate that is really important. He doesn't violate our will here. Uh, he, he's, he asks questions to search our hearts. Uh, and it's not that he couldn't know. Um, but that he wants to be in this dialogue with us where we're, where we're thinking about it because, you know, some of us are in certain conditions and who knows, like, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes we've been in that place where we're not in a good place and we just want to stay there. We just want to wallow in it. And, um, Yeah. God is asking our hearts, like, do you want to get well? You know, uh, what is it that you really want? Um, so I see here, God does not force. And God is a God who works with our will um, and wants us to really think about those deeper things. Um, all right, so what does this passage tell us about people? What does this passage tell us about people? So we're in uh, John chapter 5, 1 through 15. Hold on, I'm going to have to check on my kids. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that's live, that's real life. Um, what does this uh, tell us about people? Uh, well, I see right here. Uh, Gosh, the response, right? Even just right after the response. And just look at this, verse 7. Uh, you know where Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? And then 7, we see, Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Um, for a little bit of context here, apparently, uh, they uh, people believe that if, if whoever like an angel would touch down and stir up the pool. And then whenever it stirred, anyone who touched it would be healed. Um, so when Jesus is standing there, do you want to get well? You see that his response is not immediately that that's what he wants. It's, it's more a complaint about him. N no one could help him. Uh, I see in here, that may certainly be true, but 
he's he's stuck in this victim mentality, right? Well, I can't do that because you know no one's gonna help me in, you know, and uh, you know everyone goes in ahead of me. You know, his mind cannot conceive of even a different way. And the question that he's, it's not even the question. It's just, do you want to get well, right? Uh, so he doesn't even answer it directly. Um, yeah. So what does this tell us about people? I see that we could be stuck in our mentalities sometimes. And... Jesus is trying to speak to us and we give him excuses. We give him complaints. I mean, you see Jesus' compassion and heals him nonetheless, right? Uh, because even his answer, you know, behind it is, uh, you know, he does want to someone to put him in there, uh, but he's kind of fixated on, on something else. Um, so what I see about people Oh, man, we need to do some soul searching with God. We really do. Um, that's why prayer and talking with God, it, it's a process. God is patient in that process, but we need that process. And who knows, at the end where Jesus tells him, you know, see you're well again, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. But you'll see later that not all conditions are related to sin, right? Uh but here, for this guy, there's something deeper beyond just his physical condition. There's something spiritual going on um, that is a block. And Jesus is trying to address that. And maybe maybe, it, maybe it's this, this victim mentality. Um, yeah, we don't know. Um, yeah. Well, what is this passage? Uh, what, how does God want us to obey this passage today? How does God want us to obey this passage today? Or how does God want us to respond to this word today? Let's take a minute. Um, what, what came to my mind was being honest with the Lord about what's deep in my heart beyond just the things that I just say, uh, maybe digging a little deeper, taking a minute to dig a little deeper and move beyond my victim mentality, be in that place of surrender. Uh, that's what they talk about a lot in um, addictions uh, as a former addict, uh, just addicted to pornography. Uh, I, I've been clean for about five years now, but um, but it, it's, it's a struggle um, and not to be stuck in a victim mentality um, in the sense of uh, just seeing just myself. Um, so what's been really helpful to me is surrender, right? confessing and being real with God. Um, I'm, I'm powerless over my addiction or, or sin without him and that uh, I surrender myself to him. And when we say surrender, it sounds like giving up, but that's not what that is. Surrender is, it depends who you surrender to, right? If I'm surrendering to my sin, then that's not good. But if I'm surrendering to God, I'm saying, God, you take this. I need you to transform this, right? This is where I feel paralyzed. Right. Uh, but not giving him excuses of why 
uh, it's it's hard. I, I I could tell him that. I could be honest with that. But in that, in my heart of hearts, uh, just exploring my heart, um, moving to that place of God. I want to be. I want to be well. Right. I may not feel like it all the time, but I want to be well. And when I'm really stuck, I have to. I have to ask God, like, God, why is it so hard for me to give up this this thing that's not good for me, or, or these poisonous thoughts? And I, I ask. I really do ask God. Um, God, what is it that I really want underneath this? And usually, when uh, if it's like my lust, uh, then. It's different reasons sometimes. Sometimes it's because I just want to feel good. Sometimes it's because I want to feel significant. So so then I tell God, God, uh, in, instead of trying to find my significance by looking at this woman or whatnot, um, God, help me to find my significance in you. And that usually unlocks it and that usually uh, separates it out. So, yeah. Fourth question, who could you share this with today? I really encourage you in this. Uh, I notice a lot of people are starting to check out. Uh, It's been three weeks, y'all. It's been 21 days. Um, People are really feeling it. But let's ask God, who can we share this with? Uh, If there's anything that's giving you life, share that. It doesn't have to be long. Just a quick phone call. Just a little text to bless somebody um, who might feel isolated uh, or like an invalid, paralyzed. Um, yeah, be be that voice of Jesus to them um, through us surrendering ourselves, right? Giving ourselves to him, that'll help us give ourselves to others. All right. God, I confess, we confess to you that we are powerless over people, circumstances, and our situations without you, God. But Father God, we don't want to just stay stuck there. Help us to surrender ourselves to you, give ourselves to you in our healing. Help us, Lord, to be well. We need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.